Welcome back to another episode of Cooking with Trash, a show based around food poisoning, run-ins with the law, and broken dreams. In this episode, we'll be going deep inside one of our favorite dumpsters as we uncover the truth behind the food waste epidemic currently affecting the U.S. and the world over. For those of you unfamiliar with the show, let me explain how this works. Basically, myself and my mother, who is a prominent sous chef at an established restaurant, gather perfectly edible foods thrown into the dumpsters of local supermarkets, also known as dumpster diving. With that food, we prepare gourmet meals that would leave even Guy Fieri's nipples tingling with excitement. Although we love free food and we love to cook, the true purpose of this series is to share this life hack with all of you fellow cheapskates. Not only does it give you the ability to virtually eat for free, but it also offers you an opportunity to see face to face the amount of perfectly good food being produced and thrown out on a daily basis. And guess what? It also offers you an opportunity to actually do something about it. So with that said, we encourage you to get out there and give it a shot. Just make sure to practice safe diving as there can be potential risks involved. The last thing you want is to injure yourself or at the very extreme end up in the shower lineup at the county jail gripping your soap for dear life. So if you're unsure, check out our last video here as we cover some of the necessary precautions. So with that said, we move on to the show. Ooh, ah, oh my God, that looks really good. For only $200, you too can get this at a grocery store near you. That, or you can pull it out of a dumpster for free. We'll let you make the decision on that one. Okay, just a forewarning, some genius filmed the entire cooking process at the wrong angle. So we tried to fix this with tacos. We hope you'll enjoy. Moving on, let's see what we've gathered. Ranch, peppers, seasoning, ground beef, onions, sweet potatoes, bananas, oranges, apples, water, cocoa rice, knockoff rice krispies, watermelon, almond extract, orgasm in a bag, applesauce, blackberries, bagels, grapes, pineapples, and stylish pajamas. So before we do anything, let's check to see if we can eat our meat. We're going to look at the use by date, which tells us that we still have another three days until it's expected to go bad. Next, we'll look at the color of the meat. As you can see, it's nice and red. If there was any discoloration, it could be a sign that the meat has gone bad. We'll then look for any signs of bloating from the package. This package seems to be okay. However, if the plastic bulged out, it could be a sign that bacteria had started to break down the meat. The surefire way to tell if the meat has gone bad is with the smell test. That is right, we're making tacos, so we'll be using the bagels, beef, onions, peppers, seasoning, sweet potatoes, and water. What we'll need includes pans, a pot, a colander, knife, a peeler, and a cooking spoon. Let's begin. So first we'll start by removing the skin of the onions. Once they're nice and skinned, we'll dice them into thin slices and call that a finished meal. Behold. A meal fit for the gods. Thanks for watching, guys. I Woo. honestly I appreciate it. We'll see you next time. Yeah. And we're back. So we'll grab our peppers next and start removing all of the bits riddled with plague. We'll chop the peppers into thin slices and throw them in a bowl with our onions. And you guessed it, compost. Here you go, gold star. Now get the hell out of here. We'll turn up the stove to 3 million degrees Fahrenheit. Pour some oil in a pan and dump the peppers and onions in. I was hoping my first experience with magic would be similar to that of Harry Potter, and I have to admit, I'm very disappointed. We're going to dump a little bit of magic onto our onions and peppers. We're going to mix it around, and then get a pot of boiling water for our taters. Next, we're going to peel our taters, throwing the skin into the compost, slice them into chunks like so, and then throw them in a bowl. Once the water is boiling, we'll dump our taters into the pot, add some more of that magic seasoning, mix it around, and then head back to our onions and peppers for a little more mixing. We're going to pour an entire bottle of oil into a pan and then whack our meat right on top. Next, we'll tenderize our meat and pour some more of that special magic dust on top. We'll mix it around until depression sets in and leave it to cook until brown. Miraculously, the onions and peppers did not disintegrate after being cooked at three million degrees, so we're going to throw a bit on top of the meat. We'll scrape that into a bowl, hover over it with a camera, and then head back to gather what remains of our onions and peppers. We believe strongly in stuff, so we've provided a meatless option for the vegetarians. Our next stop finds us standing in front of an oven, where we'll set the temperature for 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Now everyone knows bagels make the best taco shells, so this was a no-brainer. We'll go ahead and slice the bagels into fourths, throw them on a baking tray, and slap that in the oven until they're nice and toasted. 
The last step to this meal is to drain the sweet potatoes, making sure to get the camera as close as possible to the scalding hot water and then pour them into a bowl. Round two. Next up, we have our black apple chocolate dessert, or blapple as we like to call it. We'll start things off by adding our blackberries to a pot, and then add a touch of our almond extract, water from our water bottle, set it on a low heat, and let it simmer on down. Next, we're going to evict SpongeBob SquarePants and use his house for our dessert. We'll start by removing the outer wall, throw the scraps into the compost, and then get our demolition crew to slice it into chunks. Throw the pineapple chunks onto a baking tray, sprinkle some almond extract on top, and then throw them in the oven at 350 degrees. Next, we'll add a few of our sea salt, caramel, almond, chocolate, whatever's to the mix. We'll stir it up until we get bored and then walk away. We'll then head outside to our compost bin where Sesame Street star Oscar the Grouch has been living against his will. We'll throw in the leftovers and then see how our compost is doing. This nice black matter is the result from months of decomposing and exactly what we want. And here we go, some artsy fartsy shots of the finished product, blah blah blah. But in all seriousness, the end result tasted freaking fantastic, and I would highly recommend you give it a shot. Now I purposefully grabbed more food than I thought we would need, as I wanted to distribute some to the local homeless shelters. I know, I'm an angel. Alrighty, um, we are currently en route to the homeless shelter. We're gonna drop off the excess food that we have, so that's all the pineapples and all that good stuff and uh, see what happens. So this is actually our first time dropping off any excess food to the homeless shelter. So I'm not 100% sure about what their rules might be in terms of accepting food that has been in a dumpster. So uh, in the event that this doesn't work out, we're gonna look at other options for, sorry, some guys riding my freaking ass right now. Other options for, uh, I guess, making use of the food. We don't want to see it go to waste. And in the event that we can't find anything, I'll just eat all of it and become morbidly obese. So anyways, hopefully it works out. All right, so I just dropped off the food. Surprisingly super simple. I just walked up, said I had two crates of food to drop off. They were like, sweet. Brought out a trolley. I just put the food on the trolley and they took it. So easy as that. Looks like it's gonna work. So yeah, awesome. Now we know what to do with all this excess food that we have. Also, if you guys were wondering about the lights earlier, yes, we did in fact get them from the dumpster. This cat doing broga, on the other hand, we did not get from the dumpster. I'd like to say thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you on the next episode. Be sure to destroy the like button. Give us a follow here and on Facebook. And if you want to support what we're doing, then head over to our Patreon right here. Any funding we get goes straight into the project and would be absolutely amazing. So peace out, Girl Scouts. We'll see you next time.